Russia has started its own evacuation plans and sent four military planes to evacuate 500 Russian citizens and those of its regional allies in Afghanistan. Russian troops are said to have carried out military drills close to the Afghan border amid heightened regional security risks. It was not clear whether the extra flights would continue past today's deadline agreed between U.S. President Joe Biden and the Taliban for the withdrawal of the U.S. troops. Stuart Smith is joining us now from Moscow for more of very good morning to you, Stuart. We've been reporting uh, that the American troops uh, and the remaining citizens have left. Is this the case? Uh, have the final uh, tallies uh, been evacuated out of Afghanistan? Yes, well, from Russia's perspective, everyone that was meant to leave has by now. Those 500 citizens, not just from Russia, but also from other countries that Russia has relations with, such as Belarus, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, making the most of those four evacuation flights. Russia able to achieve those kind of, uh, those uh, safe evacuation flights because it has good relations with the Taliban, uh, been talking with the Taliban throughout this transition of power. To Diplomats for Russia in Kabul have uh, been in discussions with the Taliban about ensuring the safety of those flights and allowing Russian citizens in particular to get out. Now, Russia says there are still a thousand others who have the right to work in Russia, but for now they must remain in Afghanistan as they're not citizens. We're talking here about students, people with work visas and other uh, entitlement documentation which would allow them to live in Russia. What Russia is not doing is taking anyone that has no legal right to work in the country, such as refugees. Russia traditionally does not accept refugees, only on very, very rare occasions, and it's making no exception for Afghanistan. What are we to make of Russia's plans, uh, future plans with Afghanistan? On the one hand, it's making overtures uh, to the country in terms of uh, a, a political and an economic relationship. On the other hand, we told of reports of uh, a Russian, the Russian army uh, forming uh, in, on the border with Afghanistan. What's the actual plan going forward? Yeah, so there's an interesting distinction there to be made that Russia has no intention of getting involved in Afghanistan militarily, but as you say, is amassing troops on the border with Afghanistan in Tajikistan, which has a 1,200 kilometer long border with the country and is very vulnerable. Tajikistan very concerned that refugees will flee from Afghanistan. Soldiers as well have already fled Afghanistan government soldiers, and they want to make sure both Tajikistan and Russia that the Taliban do not encroach onto the territory of neighboring countries. That's why Russian troops are down in the south, down there to protect that border using uh, heavy uh, military vehicles, tanks, planes, also hosting military drills to make sure that the border integrity is maintained. But aside from that, if the border sovereignty is guaranteed to the neighboring states, Russia would indeed like to see economic relations resume with Afghanistan. And at a United Nations Security Council meeting on Monday, when a draft resolution was being put forward uh, as to trying to get the Taliban to extend this August 31st deadline for evacuation. Russia put forward that the United States should release funds it's withheld from Afghanistan to help boost Afghanistan's recovery and also would like to see relations with the Taliban uh, near some degree of normality as it is now clear that the Taliban are in effect the power holders in Afghanistan. The Russian representative in Kabul, Zamir Kabulov, has been quoted as saying that Russia is ready to help rebuild Afghanistan's economy. Do we know how the uh, Taliban has uh, received these overtures from the Russian government? Well, it was actually the Taliban who made the first move here. They were the ones that initiated a meeting with uh, Russia's ambassador in Kabul, and they were quite specific about that, what they wanted. In fact, more just a, not just simply a, a request, but an expectation, they said, that big nations such as Russia would help rebuild Afghanistan. Uh, in particular, they're looking for resources to help with the healthcare system, the mining sector, and the financial sector. Now, Russia in particular can help with all three of those, with uh, 
good, uh, strong industries in all three. But you've got to remember, at the same time, the Taliban in Russia remain a terrorist extremist organization. And that actually prevents the Russian government from officially holding talks with the Taliban to uh, negotiate relations with the Taliban. And it also prevents businesses in Russia from doing commerce with Afghanistan uh, if the Taliban were, are indeed remaining in charge. So uh, a problem there for Russian businesses that may want to help and whether Russia will change that designation on the Taliban is apparently quite a tricky thing to do. It's a Supreme Court ruling which is not easily altered. Able to give us a sense of what it's like in uh, Afghanistan it, today on this defining day uh, that uh, has changed, uh, turned around events of the past two decades. Well, indeed, it is a, a monumental day, the end of 20 years of U.S. and NATO presence in Afghanistan. For now, things seem to be under control. But as we've seen, things can change incredibly quickly in Afghanistan. There are few security forces left in the country. And with that, making uh, the situation, especially around the airport, incredibly, uh, incredibly dangerous with just one uh, eruption of violence quickly leading to uh, any sort sort of uh, disorder. There are now few troops left uh, and that last few flights that go away will see Afghanistan put into a very precarious situation. Stuart Smith, thank you so much for giving us a sense of uh, what uh, it's like in Afghanistan on this momentous day.